Welcome back everybody. Today I'm back with an as seen on TV product. This is the Air World Crisper. It supposedly converts any pan into an air fryer. Now that sounds pretty amazing if it works, but that's a big if. Let's see how it goes in today's video. Before I get started, let's flash back to the unboxing and the overview and see how that went. Let's crack this open. By the way, I don't have just one box. I have two because I got this upgrade. So we'll see what's in there. The bottom of this grill rack may contain sharp edges. Always good for your pans. Not sure what that is yet, but we'll figure that out. All right, it's much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So that's uh, interesting. Just to go over the cost here. Now the Air World Crisper itself, I paid $59.99 for it. The double grill rack I paid an extra 10 bucks for. Add some tax, some processing and handling. $82.83. Hopefully it's worth it. All right, I just washed it off, put it together. Here's a fully assembled unit. Now this basket they say can only fit in 10, 11 or 12 inch pans. So my emerald pan that's eight inches is out of the question but it does seem like it can adjust the size here. Here's the, the assembled unit. There's not much to it. This temperature gauge can pull off if you want to put it in the dishwasher. This fan blade just pulls off. And here we go. This is, a, and then also the, there's three batteries that go in here as well. Twist the top and there they are. Put this here, a little turn, fan blade back on and we're ready to go. All right, so for day number one, I wanted to try it over at my other place and see how it worked there on the electric stove. I did a couple of tests and they didn't really go so well. Check it out. All right, I can supposedly work with 10 or 12 inch pans. Let's see what we got. On this 10 inch Granic Stone Pro, it seems to fit pretty well. On the hex clad, which is 12 inches, it fits pretty well there too. They say to line the pan with aluminum foil. Then we place the basket inside. I think we're almost ready to go. For the first round, we're gonna do some French fries. And I'm gonna compare it to this actual air fryer from Dash. We'll see how much of a air fryer it really is as compared to an actual air fryer. They say to coat the rack with cooking oil. Let's do that. They also say to only use medium heat. And then if you're gonna go more than 12 to 15 minutes, to go down to low. For the air fryer, I'm just gonna go with the instructions on, on this bag. I've got my pan with exactly 36 French fries. Got this air fryer with exactly 36 French fries. Try to keep everything even here. Now the air fryer says it's gonna take 10 minutes. You have to do a five, flip it, and do another five. This one says 12 to 15 minutes for most foods and to put it on medium heat. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get started and see how it goes. All right, so the instructions say to cover up your pan. Make sure that it's not touching the fries and it's not. Put the oven on medium heat and press the button. And we're off. For the air fryer, we're going five minutes. Set to 400, after five minutes, we flip them. All right, so at this point, now we wait. The fan is turning in there, so that's a good sign. We'll have to keep an eye on this temperature gauge. By the way, they say not to let it get into the red. They say do not let it get in the red, so I'll have to keep an eye on that too. All right, the first five minutes are up. Now we have to take this out of here and kind of flip it. Now another five minutes. It doesn't seem like the, uh, Air World Crisper is doing quite as, as well, but maybe it'll catch up at the end. It's like the heat's distributed mostly towards the bottom, which you would want. That's it, mostly in the basket. The Air World Crisper, I'm not seeing a lot of heat in the center. It's quite a bit around the edges and a lot more on the bottom. I think between the, uh, the aluminum foil and the basket, it's kind of taken a little longer for it to heat up and they say not to preheat it. All right, after 10 minutes in here, let's see what the air fryer shows. Definitely some crispy ones. I think it could go a little bit longer. Let's check the uh, Air World Crisper now. Air World Crisper, they're not even close to being done. These are still ice cold. Ice cold. They are still ice cold. Ice cold. I'll put it back in there no longer, see what we go. I, I, it's not even halfway done. This has been 13 minutes, so this is probably gonna be done. Let's see. They, they feel nice and crispy. That's good. Let's check the Air World Crisper now. Still cold. It is still cold after 13 minutes. And the fan seems like it's slowing down. These are brand new batteries in there. I don't know. I'm just gonna leave this on here until it's done, but it's at 13 minutes. The air fryer is completely done and the air world is still not. They're still cold. There were some comments from Bed Bath & Beyond saying it took forever. Well, maybe that's gonna be my, my experience too. 
I'm gonna see how long this takes. But they said to put it down a low after 12 to 15 minutes. I guess I need to do that. I'm gonna put it down lower because they say after 12 minutes, go on low. Oh, that's gonna make it take longer. <laughs> While I'm waiting for the air whirl crisper to finish, let's see how the air fryer did. They're good, they're done. I mean, that's a nice French fry. It took 12, 13 minutes while the air whirl is still cold. Not an impressive first demonstration with the air whirl crisper. Maybe it'll come from behind and catch up, or maybe not. I'm gonna eat these while I wait. All right, I'm at the 30 minute mark. Let's, let's check it out and see who, if we're making any progress here. I'm gonna kind of uh, move these around a little bit, maybe try to shuffle these around a little bit and see if that helps. All right, well, I'm not gonna check back until these are done, however long that takes. All right, we're, I, that's it. I'm throwing in the towel. It's at the one hour mark. I can't take it anymore. I've gotta see where it's at at the one hour mark. I'm just gotta, I gotta move on to something else. I feel like I'm gonna run out of, my batteries are gonna run out before I even finish one set of fries. Let's see what we got here. Well, I mean, we get some crispiness. We, we got, this is, I mean, it's still a little bit soft, but I mean, they looked almost done. Let's pour these out. I mean, they're almost done. It only took an hour. All right, so I mean, they're somewhat crispy. There's still some soft ones. It, it's still not as done as the air fryer, which took uh, 13 minutes. Like this one is very soft still. They're done. They're just not as done. And it took four times as long. I'm not gonna try the softest one. I'm gonna try and find, this one's kind of, it's kind of uh, flopping around. I'll try one of the more done fries. Here, this one looks pretty good. That one looks probably the best one of the bunch. It's still not that crispy though. It's all right, it's pretty good. Not great, pretty good. This one, not so good. I think part of the problem was turning it down to low after 12 to 15 minutes as the instructions stated. Next time I'm not doing that because obviously that didn't work. So I'm gonna have to improvise from now on. So let me try the next thing. I'm gonna keep it on medium instead of going on low and see if it's any faster. All right, I've got my hex clad this time, so it's a larger pan. I sprayed the rack with some cooking spray. I have one layer, not a lot in here, so let's, let's see what happens. I got some chicken nuggets and some tater tots. Putting the, uh, the burner on medium, no preheating like they say. Put it on there, hit the button. I'm gonna keep an eye on the clock and see how long this takes. I'll check back in 12 to 15 minutes. Hopefully they're done. We shall see. All right, it's been exactly 12 minutes. They say most foods are done in 12 to 15 minutes, so let's see what we've got here. Removing the lid. All right, let me see. They feel room temperature. They just feel room temperature. They are not done at all. It's been 12 minutes. This time I'm not turning it down to low like the last time. I'm gonna leave it on medium. I'm gonna go another, I guess another 12 minutes and see what happens. All right, we're at the 23 minute mark. Let's check it out here. The temperature inside says it's a little over 200 degrees. Well, they actually they actually feel done at the 23 minute mark. I think, I think they might actually be done. All right, maybe redemption from that first disastrous round. Let's try, uh, put them on a plate and try them out. These tater tots, I would say, are not 100% done. I'm seeing mostly temperatures in the 130s, 140s, some 150s, which isn't really exactly the best temperature. This is warm, but I, I, it's not really that very crispy. This is not crispy at all. I, I mean, I guess it's kind of done. All right, the good news and bad news is the good news is it seemed like it was faster than the first round, but the bad news is still very slow. Let me try a couple of these out. Here's my kind of warm tater tot. Not crispy. Here's my kind of done chicken nugget bite. Well, they tasted done, they just weren't very crispy. I don't know how long I've had to leave them there to get crispy. I also didn't turn the stove down to low after 12 or 15 minutes like the instructions say, so I don't know, I gotta keep trying. I'm starting to see a pattern here and I don't like the pattern I'm seeing, but we got more to try out, so let's do that. Quick update, I put these, these back in the Dash air fryer for about four minutes and they're perfectly crispy and totally done. Oh well. All right, so my first day really didn't go very well, so I decided to just call it at that point and come home and kind of rethink this thing and see if I can come up with ways to make this actually work. So what I did was I went back and watched the commercial to the website and something jumped out at me after using it that hadn't jumped out at me before. First thing I noticed is this thermometer looks different than the one they show in the commercial. That's not really a big deal because prototypes sometimes change before they actually go into production. But I also noticed that they use this rack in most of the advertising and that rack I did not get. This is the rack that you receive. 
It looks nothing like the one they show in the advertising. The one in the advertising, they show bacon, they show wings on there. In fact, in the instructions, they say, here's some great foods for the Air World CRISPR. Doesn't mention bacon, doesn't mention wings, doesn't mention really any proteins at all, mainly just prepackaged and frozen foods. The ad also states that it can be used on virtually any size pot or pan, but the instructions say something a little different. The instructions state that the Air World air frying lid requires the use of a 10 inch, 11 inch, or 12 inch frying pan with a minimal depth 1.75 inches. That is not virtually any size. So I had planned to make bacon in this, but I'm not going to because I don't think bacon is really going to go very well in here. This little handle in the middle here, I just don't think bacon's going to really work very well in there. Not to mention the rack they showed in the advertising was lifted off the surface, which seemed to be more of an air fryer than this, which is flush against the bottom of the pan. They also don't show any of the pans lined with aluminum foil in their advertising, even though it's stated as a requirement in the instructions. So what I'm going to do is try one more time. I'm gonna to try to make it work. I'm gonna throw the instructions down and just try to wing it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to preheat it, even though they say not to do that, I'm gonna preheat it. There's no instructions on how to preheat it. I'm just gonna figure it out. Number two, I'm not putting aluminum foil in the bottom. I don't really care if it drips on my hex clad. Hex clad doesn't really scratch and it's three years old. I'm not using aluminum foil. One more thing about the advertising that kind of jumped out at me is that in the beginning, they show someone struggling with this big air fryer and they say, air fryers are expensive. Ironically, this lid with a fan and this cheap aluminum basket were the same price as the Dash air fryer that I tested yesterday that slaughtered this in a head-to-head -head competition. But I'm gonna lob a softball at it. I'm gonna try to get something that's easy to make in there and hopefully I can get it to work. And we'll see if this test can finally redeem the air roll crisper. We shall see. All right, so here's, here's what I came up with. I've got two packages of these Pillsbury biscuits. I'm gonna put one in the Air World Crisper, one on a baking sheet. I'm preheating the oven right now. I'm also preheating the pan on medium. So when the oven is done, I'm gonna assume the pan is done as well. That takes eight to 11 minutes. We shall see how long this takes. No aluminum foil, preheating. I'm slightly optimistic. Well, not really. All right, it's done preheating. Let's load these up. Got plenty, plenty of room in here. Let's see if it's eight to 11 minutes. We shall see. It's the eight minute mark. I'm gonna try one of each. At first glance, here's the one from the oven. That looks actually looks done. This one, it looks done on the bottom, but not on the top. It's doughy on the top and brown on the bottom. Not even, these in the oven are done. After eight minutes, here, here are those out of the oven. They look, they look nice. Let's check the Air World Crisper now. This is 10 minutes. And look, the, the bottoms are getting brown, but the tops are not. It is not cooking them evenly. See, look at this. That's not, come on now, that's not good. This one looks pretty good. Although there is still kind of a doughy section at the top. I just don't, I'm just not a fan. I tried, I really did try. So in the end, maybe surprisingly, I'm not a big fan of the Air World CRISPR. I know, it's shocking, right? It doesn't seem like it cooks faster as they advertise. The, the rack that they show in the advertising is not even the one you get. It seems like it was probably a good idea in the prototype stage, but maybe some changes happened during production where it's not as good as it was originally planned. The advertising seems to show the one that worked better. It looks like they have an update of their advertising. The website seems to have the prototype and the production version kind of mixed together. Everything either seemed to take longer or not be even. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I would like to see, have seen how that worked with that rack because this doesn't seem very effective. The biscuits in my last test was, was a clear win by the oven, which only took eight minutes. After eight to 10 minutes, you know, this is, this is what I got. One side done, the other side doughy. So it's not even even. I have a feeling that the prototype they tested out probably worked better than the one that they end up sending to customers. Sometimes things change in production and not always for the better, and I think this might be one of those cases. That's purely speculation though. I did feel like as I was disregarding the instructions and kind of winging it, I came up with better results, but still not very good. You can spend 60 bucks on a Dash air fryer and get one that specifically works for that purpose, rather than trying to buy this $60 lid and convert virtually any pan as long as it's 10 to 12 inches into an air fryer. That's not very even and takes longer. I'm just not a big fan of the Air World CRISPR, but I do feel like I gave it a fair shot. But if you've used the Air World CRISPR, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.